Hey everybody, so uh, we're going to do another little teardown. These are more modules from the uh, Grass Instruments Polygraph. Uh, these two particular uh, modules are actually in my so-called working one, um, although I haven't, I haven't turned it on yet. So I'm not actually going to strip these. Um, we're just going to open them up, have a look inside, and uh, see if there's anything interesting. So the two units I've got here are um, two of the plug-in uh, pre-amplifier modules that go into the um, DC driver amp. Um, I've got here a wideband AC pre-amplifier and integrator. That is model number 7P3B. And we have an EKG tachograph pre-amplifier, model 7P4DE. So let's take a look at the uh, tachograph, the EKG tachograph first. Um, this uh, seems to be dated June 1973 um, and the um, warranty stickers are still intact so this has never been opened since uh, 1973 which is quite impressive. So if we just have a quick look around this uh, before we take the top off uh, we've got uh, the input connection down the left hand side just like on the other modules. We have um, the standard connector that uh, goes out to the plug panel um, as we saw on the other input modules, uh, but we've got two additional ones. Um, this is called PC and M. They both have some uh, unusual looking pin layouts. Um, we have calibration button. Um, in some of the modules that I've looked at, uh, there is actually an internal battery in some of them, and I suspect this one does as well. Um, I think it's, that's just used as a calibration, so you press this button, it allows you to um, input the battery the battery uh, calibration voltage in um, and you can use that to uh, set adjustments and things. Uh, just below that we have a lead selector. Uh, now given that this is um, an EKG or um, ECG um, there's um, all different ways to connect the um, ECG leads up to the body. Um, and this just allows you to select between them. Um, it was very similar to the uh, um, different lead selector um, that was on the um, ECG monitor that I did a teardown on um, back at uh, the beginning of the year, I think it was. Um, that was a Physio Control VSM3 ECG monitor uh, that had similar setup, so you could choose between different um, different connection layouts. Uh, next across we have um, sensitivity, um, this has MV slash CM, so millivolts per centimetre, so I think that's just how much it uh, it moves it, the pen on the paper depending on the input, uh, the input voltage. Uh, we've got uh, adjust cal, so adjust calibration adjust here, I'm not really sure what that, that's for. We've got a trace restorer um, button there, I'm not sure what that would be. Um, and next to that we have a half amp low frequency um, adjustment that's got between one, two, three, four, five different settings there. Um, notice again, like on some of the other modules, there's um, a dual display, so it, uh, it shows it in two, in two different ways. Um, so that's in hertz and this one's in um, seconds as a time constant. And the next bit along, which um, seems to be uh, divided out into a separate little uh, layout and uh, module, we have the uh, tachograph controls. Um, there's a couple of little um, adjustment pots here, um, which obviously aren't meant to be adjusted that often. Um, we've got up slope, down slope. Um, we have another line filter switch, so that allows you to uh, filter out uh, any mains line frequency uh, hum, um, and we've got a whole load of different settings on on this, um, cal center minus 2cm plus 2cm. Actually looking at this I think you can see and uh, understand a little bit more about how this works. We have, um, that is, the tachograph is off, In on this side we have all the calibration um, settings, so this one here adjusts the center position, and this one here adjusts the upper and lower position of the, uh, the uh, full scale deflection I guess uh, and then that's it yep and then in use which is where it actually uh, is turned on in, in use we have uh, DC input 
AC input, um, AC, well, we've got AC low and AC fast, and that's it. And next to that, we have uh, Force CM Tack Scale BM, which is um, going to be how much it scales the um, tachograph into the four centimeters. Um, now, when I initially saw this, I was thinking that, um, that you'd have a, uh, a trace moving along the paper, and then you'd see the beats as, as you know, the typical um, pulse um, that you sort of see traditionally on um, ECGs. I think this is different. Um, I think what it's doing, it has a, a constant line which moves up and down. Uh, I'd have, probably have to draw this. So th this is how, how I think it would uh, actually record on the on the paper. We have uh, the top scale is 180, as we just set on that uh, on the adjustment. Um, center would be 90, and the lower would be 60. So the pen would come along and draw a historical record of the uh, beats per minute. And just below that we have a trigger. I'm not sure what that is for, uh, but we've got uh, a slope up and down, positive and minus. Um, line frequency filter again, a threshold adjustment. And output display, amplifier or tack. Um, so that obviously allows you to um, either just use this as an amplifier, possibly, um, or a tachograph. And we have uh, two inputs here for external triggering, it seems, and a tachograph output. Right, uh, around at the back we have Cal Out, Trig Mon, Trigger Monitor, um, Ramp, Hype, no idea what these are. Uh, beat, mark, amplitude, I adjust, and DC balance. Not entirely sure what any of those do, to be honest. And on the top, we've got a little window. Uh, well, it's not a window, it's just a hole in the top of the panel, um, which allows you to see in. Um, does appear to be a rather crusty looking battery in there. Um, now, as I said before, this particular unit has not been, not been opened, so uh, all the seals are intact from 1973, so. Well, the insides of this look a little bit more interesting than the other ones. Um, slightly different, um, well, not design, but it just um, things are just sort of different. Um, for a start, the uh, the wafer switches we've got a mixture of the uh, newer enclosed type and the old uh, uh, proper old wafer switches that we you can rebuild. Um, We've got a board on the top here, and uh, two, two big capacitors here, another one there. Um, the wiring looks a little bit neater in this. Um, it's all in like nice, uh, nice right angles, um, whereas the other ones tend to be a little bit more messy. I mean, it's, it's kind of like that over here, but, uh, but it does look slightly neater. So we have this battery over here, which um, has obviously seen better days. Um, it looks like there is an additional PCB underneath this metal shielding down here and there is another little PCB just here um, attached vertically. Now, a couple of little things to note here that I've spotted. Um, there's this wire here which has um, its connection between the PCB and um, this wafer switch. Um, so that's the blue wire. Now around it is wrapped, but unterm unterminated, is this coil here, which comes down and runs through to this connection down here. So that's interesting. They're obviously doing uh, some kind of pickup or something, is that? Okay, right, let's uh, take the bottom cover off and see what it's like on the other side. Well, it certainly seems a bit more um, densely packed than the other um, amplifier modules. You can see all the back of the uh, switches and everything here, so it's a, a whole lot more dense in the back here. Um, we've got uh, this second PCB here, some interesting looking devices there. They're probably guessing at uh, when we looked at the other the other modules, there was just tons of op amps and stuff everywhere. They that's what they could be. I'll check the part numbers in a moment. We've got. Um, Possibly some more here, here. So 
some adjustment pots. Some of those have been glued down. That one isn't. Now, interesting, there's a, a nice looking device just here. And this is a Teledyne 712-2. Uh, notice there is a patent number there. And there is also the values of 390 ohms and 12 volt DC written on it. Okay, now this is actually a relay. Um, it's uh, quite a small specialised relay by Teledyne. It's double pole, double throw. And it's rated to 1 amp at... Uh, 28 volts on the contacts at that uh, oh it's at uh, half an amp 28 volts it's rated for a million cycles uh, these uh, black devices here um, the partner com part number comes back as a, um, a transistor um, now they are six leads uh, but it does look like they're separated out so um, I wonder whether this might be uh, two matched transistors in the same package and looking at the back of the board, it's very similar to the uh, the other ones that we've seen. Uh, it's all hand-drawn traces, uh, and all the solder points have been um, checked and marked. Uh, there's a copyright there, 1972. And just buried away down here is that uh, other small board that I mentioned, the vertically mounted one. Um, this looks like it's mostly um, just a connection board. Um, there is some resistors and uh, some old-school looking transistors on it. So that, uh, that was quite interesting, um, there's uh, obviously some old nice uh, old school style components in there, there's a little diode there, uh, you can tell this is definitely from the 70s. Right, I'm going to pop the lid back on this and we'll have a look at the other unit. Right, so this one is the AC, sorry, wideband AC preamp and integrator, uh, we have the con input connection which we didn't have on the, the other integrator, um, we have uh, calibration adjustment, um, these things all seem to have some kind of calibration on it. Um, we've got external cal, 1.7 volt RMS, um, amplifier sensitivity, high and low, and uh, adjustment, a cal button, presumably again for an internal battery. Uh, we've got a function change here between amplifier and integrator, so that's just two positions. And we have this uh, half amp low frequency adjustment again um, that we saw on the uh, EKG unit as well. And we've got a couple of uh, banana connections here for a battery test and J31, whatever that is. And next along to the right we have the integrator. Uh, we've got adjustment for the time constant, um, rectification options, half wave or full. Uh, it's another sensitivity control, threshold control, baseline control, and uh, then we have the uh, presumably the outputs. And round on the back we have uh, three balance adjustment controls uh, with a banana jack on each one, J37, 36 and 35. So again, very similar layout to the other ones. Um, you can tell it all dates from this. It comes from the same date, the same same factory, the same people designing it. Um, we've got uh, wafer switches. Um, notice that it's the older type in these. In this particular one, um, got a rather um, another crusty looking battery here. I should probably have to take these out um, to stop them leaking. Lots of big caps. Uh, interesting, these are um, they're one microfarad, but they're rated to 100 volts, which is odd considering um, this is all the low voltage uh, system. It only runs on 12 volts. So, and this one is an MC1303L, and that is a single channel audio power output amplifier. And it's a similar story to the other ones in the uh, looking in from the underneath. Uh, we've got uh, same style of PCB. Um, obviously all the connection, all the solder points have been marked and checked. Okay, I think that pretty much covers it for these two units. Um, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.